almost all utopias, they all, you know, intentional cities that are planned by the frontal lobe of the human brain, there again, involve trying to take over the natural powers that authentic cities come out of, which is just the slow drift across topological spaces of human beings and their messiness. But they're rooted in the soil and you get cities like Athens, Jerusalem, Rome, Vienna, places like this that come organically into being. And they last for a very, very long time, precisely because they weren't planned communities. Planned communities brings in the intellect and you, it's totally artificial. Its constructions are artificial, like Disney's idea to build Epcot City. He, he literally wanted to build a city underneath a glass dome and eliminate the automobile and eliminate crime and poverty. Apparently not thinking about the greenhouse effect of the glass dome. <laughs> uh, these guys don't think about things like this. They, they fall in love with a, a transcendent idea that implants into their brains a vision. And they follow the vision without thinking about what the consequences might be. And we've got, of course, experiments like Brasilia and places like this. And also Henry Ford went into uh, the jungles of the Amazon to try to build a miniature city called Fordlandia, where he was exporting automobiles and American pop to the Amazon. That failed, too. So I'm always I'm interested to hear these little utopian projects, because after all, we're going to need them. The fact of the matter is that the civilization that we're in now has already hit its iceberg and its two hour time limit during which it will sink for sure has already passed. We're at the point where the, you can't reverse this now. The hole has been torn in the side of the boat. And as the character in James Cameron's film remarks, She's made of iron, sir, and I assure you that she will sink. <laughs> it's going to happen. The laws of physics already tell you it's going to sink. There's no way to stop the melting of the glaciers at this point. It's irreversible. You can maybe put some Band-Aids on it, slow it down, unscrew a few light bulbs, put up some solar panels. That's all fine, but it's not going to reverse the damage that's already been done. There's too much CO2 now in the atmosphere, and it's been put in too suddenly to reverse this process. The glaciers are going, you know, they're going to melt. So the experiment that we've created now with these world cities and their cosmopolitan interiors are going to sink. We know that the sea levels are going to rise and flood places like New York and Los Angeles and Miami, Bangladesh, New Orleans, Venice. They're all going to sink. That's It's a 100% certainty. We know this. So we, we are going to need alternative ideas for living. We're going to need ideas for sustainable communities but those communities are going to have to be designed in such a way as to not only be self-sustaining, but they've got to take into account refugee populations, which are going to rise and rise and rise as these catastrophes along our coastal cities proliferate and shift populations inland, just like New Orleans did. It shifted refugee populations during Katrina as far west as out here in Phoenix. There were people taking up refuge out here in our big coliseum. So the inland populations are going to have to be designed in such a way that they can take in these refugees and build them in somehow, maybe as Europe has been doing with the Syrian refugees, just taking them in. But um, I am skeptical of utopian experiments. I find them very entertaining, and I find utopian literature very entertaining, but it's always got a tragic flaw. Every time I sit down with one of these books uh, recounting it, it's always like the beginnings of a Greek tragedy. You know the guy is doomed. As soon as Agamemnon pulls up and starts bragging about his deeds and gets out of his chariot with his inflated ego, you know the guy is in big trouble, and it's fun to watch. <laughs>